Welcome back. It's Friday, so high school football is on the menu tonight. But first, Tyler, I believe you have our top play from last week, right? Why, yes, I do, Austin. Tonight we get into week five of high school football, but right now we have your results for the top play of week four. Now, over 1,500 of you voted in, and thank you all for participating. And it was a close one, but by a margin of just 60 votes, this was our winner. And it was our wild card. Alpina goalie Mason Bray goes airborne for this save, and he just gets his fingertips on it to deflect the ball out of the net. Talk about going all out. What an effort from Bray here. Just a brilliant save from the keeper, and congrats on being the top play of week four. Austin, take away week five. Yes, for the first time since the second week of high school football season, we had some Thursday night action. Because of the Elk Festival, Atlanta was in action. The Huskies were looking for their first win since beating Posen, and they hosted the Hornets of Pelston. It was a wet and cold night for some football in Atlanta, but the Huskies played on. Starting things off, the Hornets would strike first, and Kenny Crawford sends a deep bomb to Garrett Cameron, and that is a 59-yard touchdown for Pelston to take the early lead. Now, still the first quarter. Huskies are down by two touchdowns, and TJ Curry, he's going to bring his team back into the game he's going to take the option and take it all the way for the Atlanta touchdown score is now 7 to 14 and we're going to come up towards the end of the first and this is when the rain really started to pick up now you got to watch this play from Kenny Crawford he's going to get nearly brought down in the backfield by the Huskies but he shakes free heads the opposite direction and he'll make it to the end zone just an amazing play by Crawford getting the touchdown for the Hornets now second quarter Huskies down 30 to 8 but they just kept fighting the solo senior of the squad, Trace Jurgens, is going to take it right up the gut, and he'll grab the Huskies their second touchdown of the game. He really was everywhere tonight. Kenny Crawford is up next. He's going to send it to Landon and Ethan Landon, and with the defender on him, he is going to spin free of this tackle. Get your hands off me, he says. He breaks free and gets the touchdown. Now, nearing the end of the first half, the Huskies have possession, and this great pass from TJ Curry is going to find Dakota Stevens, and Atlanta would finish the half with the touchdown. If we fast forward actually past this touchdown, great work. Fourth quarter, Atlanta was down by 22, but by the fourth quarter, they would have the game tied. The comeback would nearly be complete, but the Hornets would have the last laugh. Garrett Cameron gets the handoff and bolts to the Atlanta defense, and he gets the touchdown. Atlanta, they fought valiantly, but Pelston would just be too much in the end. Final score in this one, 56 to 36. Well, Atlanta traveled to Traverse City West for a matchup with the Titans. The Wildcats dropped that one 40 to nothing. And Johannesburg Lewiston, they were in action against Frankfurt. They dropped that one by one score, 14 to 8. Also, Oscoda, they hosted East Jordan. They took care of business on the road, beating the Owls 38 to nothing. And Sheboygan took care of the visiting Tawas Braves. They won that one 40 to 12. Now, that's all we have for you right now. But you know there's more sports coming up next. Tyler, can you give us a preview? Hey, Austin, yeah, we have a ton of eight-man action for you. Coming up next, the Augray Sims Wolverines try to keep that perfect season alive, but Alcona is looking to play spoiler. Stay tuned. More fifth down when we come back. Welcome back into the fifth down. We start this half of our coverage with a much anticipated matchup. The new eight man team, the Alcona Tigers, have had an amazing year. And Andre Sims has had, well, an even better year on their record. They've scored 50 in every game but one, and they are undefeated heading into tonight. These two squared off down in Andre Sims, and it was a battle for the ages. It was homecoming night in Andre Sims. The flags were out for the Wolverines, but the Tigers, they would be the ones controlling the first quarter. Here's a freshman QB, Garrett Summers, rolling out, and he finds his man, Colin Walker, for the over the shoulder catch, and the Tigers. They're going to strike first. They're up six to nothing. Next drive, Augre is knocking at the door, but Garrett Summers, he's going to answer the door, and he says, hey, I'll be taking that. It's Alcona football after the interception. That's the quarterback's second interception in just as many weeks, and they knew exactly what to do. They give it to Michael Basner. Look at Basner. He's going to break a tackle here and then just run over this defender with no regard for human life whatsoever. And if you like deja vu, he's going to do it again this drive, but this time he's going to get in the end zone for it after shaking off a couple tackles for the Tiger touchdown. It's 14 to nothing early, but Augre Sims would then put their foot down. Look at this catch here from Gabe Metzger with the toe drag. And then on the same drive, look at Keegan Bender. He's going to do his best Rob Gronkowski impression, New England reference, just refusing to go down. And the Wolverines are on the board after the long run. It's 14 to 8. They would make that two-point conversion. All right, Tigers looking to rebound on the other end of the ball. Summers is rolling out, but 
He's going to lose the ball here, and that's actually picked up by Wolverine quarterback Mason Van Sickle, and that would lead to eight all gray points. So the Wolverines were down four when Bender struck again. I really don't think anyone wants to tackle him at this point. He's going to be in for six, and the all gray Sims lead, and then the two-point run from Van Sickle is good next. He's going to just waltz into the end zone right there untouched, and that all gray offense would not stop. Here's a beautiful throw from Van Sickle to Evan Saunders for the touchdown, and Aubre goes on to win this one. The final score is 72 to 32. Alcona hosts Rogers City next week for their homecoming, and Aubre travels to Hale, who were in action tonight. Austin, how was that Hale game? Well, Tyler, it was a bit of a nail biter. Now we head over to Hillman now as the Tigers took on the Eagles of Hale, and this one was a close battle. It would be a game of two different play styles with one team that utilized the pass and the other one being very run heavy. Starting with the Eagles, this became one of their key plays that they would run. Zachary Kopecki is going to take the jet sweep and he's going to lose one defender, and then, he, then another. He stays in bounds and runs down the sideline to the end zone as they strike first in this one. Now, here's the Hillman Tigers. A.J. Jones takes the snap, drops back, and he's going to find Caleb Hivery over the top of his defender, and he grabs the catch for the touchdown. Scores now 6-8 to Hale. The Tigers, they would use some trickery on this next play. Watch this. You might as well call it the Hillman special. Trenton Taratua, he's going to throw it downfield to quarterback A.J. Jones. He gets the touchdown reception, and the Hillman Tigers, they take the lead. And the Tigers would continue to pull away. They're going to get a goal line touchdown this time from Sean Hennigan. He goes in there and gets the touchdown. Halftime, Hillman would be up 22-8. to Hale, though, they kept fighting back in this one going into the second half. They made sure to keep it close. Alex Wanty takes the handoff and runs it straight into the corner of the end zone, shrinks the Hillman lead to just eight. Then the Eagles would be in striking distance once again. Robert Roseburg takes the option and runs it into the end zone for the touchdown, but they wouldn't get the two-point conversion, so Hillman still leads by two. And with 57 seconds remaining, Hale would get the ball punted back for one more drive, but the return is muffed, and the Tigers die for possession, and Hillman recovers. Hale's comeback would end right then and there as the Tigers come out at home. Final score is 22 to 20. Now we had a lot of action, more than just those games, and that was a nail biter, down to the last minute. But let's take a look at some of the other eight man scores from around the area. Woodenwell Prescott would fall to Mayo Osaba. Those Bolts are having a great season, 56 to 16. And Onaway would also lose by a big margin against St. Mary's, 42 to six. And finally, Roger City was in action against the Posen Vikings in Roger City. And the, uh, the Hurons would get the shutout victory against Posen. They would win 38 to nothing.